Dexter here, uh, we don't know for sure, but the family suspects that he was, uh, uh, his former home had a lot of little kids that maybe grabbed him in his back legs and, or he might've had, uh, and so he's not a big fan of having his legs grabbed or sleep uh, moved out of his eyes, which is a problem if they're trying to bathe him. Here, buddy. So what I'm doing is I wanna create a positive association uh, by using these treats. Now what I've been doing is these are the tricky trainer treats that I love to use. Um, I squeeze them, they're, they're meat flavored and they're, sque I can, they're flexible, they're not like a cookie treat. So I can, I, they start like this and I can smash them and give him the ability to, to, to have little bits of it released through his mouth. So come here buddy. So it's not his front legs, it's just his hind quarters, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing, and actually I'm gonna do it for his, uh, for his eyes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let him start chewing on it, and I'm just gonna create a little bit of a get close while I'm petting him while he's chewing on the street. I'm not touching him in his eye or his area that he doesn't like. Come here, buddy. There you go. All right, come here, don't go anywhere. I know it's just Max. Come here. So what I'm gonna do is basically let him start chewing on this first, and then I'm gonna get a little bit closer each time. This is gonna take some time but eventually, you can get, and when he does freeze, he's telling you that's a warning. And so that means that that's too close. Now, we live in an instant gratification society we were just talking about off camera. We have a tendency to do things, push, we want everything right at once. This is something we might have to practice a lot before we get to the point where we can be here. And he's not trying to nip me. I'm almost touching his eye. It's more, is it more right here? More yeah. right here? Yeah. It's more on the inside. Okay. So again, he's slowed down. So sometimes you might just even have to hold your hand there without actually moving it at first. So there we go. And I want to get him chewing on it. Well, I can just go and pet him. And I'm going to get a little bit closer, a little bit closer each time. Now, this is not something you're going to want to do all in one fail swoop. This might take 10 or 15 practices at this. But after a while, he starts to associate when I get these amazing treats. They're touching me a little bit closer to the eye, but because it gets so pro it's so progressive, the dog doesn't really think about it. And eventually you're pulling it out and he's having a high value treat delivered at the same time. After a while, he'll like, he'll go stuff a bunch of stuff in his eyes so he can come and clean it out and he gets those treats. <laughs> same sort of thing for his, his hindquarters. So basically I'm just gonna, uh, here I'll give you that one because that one's uh, done. Now I have a handful of treats in this hand so you, or have a holster of treats so you can go, kind of go grab them. So again, I'm just gonna, so he kind of slowed down a little bit, there we go. Get him chewing on it first. Okay, buddy. So you might want to start with just the eye. Now for me, one of the things you don't want to do is lean over the dog. Mm -hmm. And for me to get, I'm kind of taller, and you can see how he's leaning in. It shows a little bit of lack of trust or a little hesitation. So I would want to keep on doing this until he's no longer sticking his leaning way forward. This is kind of, this would be good for a show dog. That's what they call stacking. Um, I don't show dogs, I'm not a big fan of dog shows. Um, but, uh, but basically the idea is just to keep on creating a positive association over and over and eventually you can get to the point where you're doing those things. Now because we have a family here, one person might actually be doing this, another person might be sitting to his side and they're just doing it. Just make sure we're not reaching over him and make sure anytime that he freezes, we freeze as well and don't pull your arm away right away. But the idea is if I want to get to, if I want to get to, for him it's high, lower is worse. So if I want to get to here, I'm going to start petting, scratching here while I'm feeding him a treat. And then next time, I might do 10 treats and I might only get an inch. And the next time I might get another inch. So it might take a, a week or so before we can actually get to that area. But because we're creating a positive association, this is called counter conditioning. We're just creating a, a happy association. He's happy to do this. This is why like when we used to go to the, see the doctor, they would give us a lollipop. You know, because, you know, hey, I'm going to stick you with a needle, but you get something good afterwards. Kids are, like, more inclined to put up with something. Same sort of thing for him. Now, I think this is exasperated by the fact that he has no rules or boundaries or limits before, and he gets to tell his humans what to do. So he's like, I believe I'm in charge. You're doing something I really don't want, and I, you don't have the authority to be doing that or to make me request. Now, the other thing is you guys have put a muzzle on him or wrapped him in a towel and a blanket and forced him to do it. If you're afraid of spiders... Mm -hmm. and I put you in a straitjacket and start dropping spiders on your head, that's not gonna help you get over your fear of spiders. It's most, effective, most probably gonna make it worse. 
So that's probably exasperated the problem here and broken a little bit of the trust. And that might be part of why he has a little bit of a distance from humans, you know, when he's a sitting position because that puts him in a disadvantage. But if we use positive reinforcement, this is the benefit of positive dog training, uh, and we create a positive association, after a while, like I said, he'll be happy. He'll let us give him a little massage in his leg, but it's gonna take some time. So go at his pace. Remember when he freezes or if he snaps or he starts licking his lips, now he's gonna be eating the treat. So in between the treats, like if I'm giving the treat and I, I uh, every once in a while I finish the treat, I, when I'm doing it, I'm gonna be petting him and I'm gonna hold the treat and then I'm gonna freeze when I go to get another treat. So if the hand is still there and he starts licking his lips, licking the lips can be a sign of stress for dogs. Now in this case, he might just have something in his mouth and so it can also be something else. But if you notice lick lipping or freezing or breathing heavy, those can be signs of stress. So if he's breathing heavy, just keep on practicing that step over and over until he's no longer breathing heavy or he stops freezing. And then go to the next step and get a little bit closer and a little bit closer. Eventually, you'll be able to massage him anywhere in school. This, and if you're watching at home, this is why it is so crucially important when you have a puppy that you get them used to being manhandled. Uh, I don't mean that in a bad way, but like especially the ears, uh, lip flipping up the gums, um, uh, the tail, and the paw digits. Those are the areas that dogs really sometimes have a problem with later in life. If you have a puppy, and you just you know, what I do is I give it a treat and pick one's paw and manipulate it. Give it another treat or a piece of kibble. Do I do that with all their paws. And I do this every day, and I do this in conjunction with using a Dremel. So at the end of the deal, I can eventually pull out the Dremel, and they're just used to me manipulating them because they got something positive to happen when they were young. Right, buddy? That's right. So this is how we can use counter-conditioning to help a dog get, get over not liking touched in certain places of their body.